In this video, I'll show you a new thinking technology. It's faster and better than reasoning models and also more cost efficient for agentic use. So Anthropic has run tests on this specific technique and for the Tau benchmark, so specifically with agent tasks that require very intricate execution of tasks and interactions with users, this method of thinking or reasoning out and planning things is significantly better than previous techniques. So you can see over here that it almost doubles the performance of baseline models and significantly outperforms the orange line over here, which is the normal extended reasoning or thinking models so like O1 and Claude 3.7 so not the extended thinking versions. So this is a significant improvement on the current performance of AI agents when used for tool calling tasks and so in this video we're going to take a look at what this method is exactly how it works and most importantly how you can implement it in your existing agentic setup so that you can achieve significantly better performance. Now to get access to my implementation of this tool as well as the actual source code for the examples I'll run in this video you can use this repository. So the link to it is in the description. Let's kick things off though with exploring why reasoning models are so bad for agentic use. Now if you've used reasoning models for agents in the past, you know exactly just how bad they are. They have cases of not using the provided tools, leaving out important details when using these tools, and just straight up just not calling tools in the right order that they need to. And this stems primarily from two things. One is the nature of reasoning within these models and also the second one is the very nature of the evolution of an agentic problem. So reasoning models or extended thinking as Anthropic calls it, have only the ability to reason or think out a plan right at the beginning of solving a problem. This is efficient for most things like solving complex math problems but the issue with an agentic problem is the evolution it undergoes during the actual processing. So the reasoning model will receive the original problem that comes in from the user and rightfully so it will do sort of a reasoning step as it starts to think about that problem. The issue though is that once it calls tools and gets additional information about the problem, the problem changes completely into something that's quite different from what was originally fed from the model. But these reasoning models, because they only have a single reasoning process, they then go on to produce the stale generation, the stale output from their original reasoning that was actually based on a completely different problem. Now the changes that occur during this tool phase can either be really simple or even slightly complex and these reasoning models will still produce a wrong output simply because they had already planned to do something which is now no longer the right thing because of the additional information that's coming from tool calls. Now to fix these problems, we need a bit more of an adaptive system that can decide when to rethink or to re reason its original thought process about a specific problem and this is where we can begin to put together the concept that we want to talk about in this video. So in essence you have the user define an original problem and yes we will do some initial reasoning but if the problem changes because of the new information that we get from tool calls and what we now know about the agentic problem and we can call an unlimited number of reasoning steps depending on the amount of re-reasoning or rethinking that we need to do because of the new information that we get. Now because of these new reasoning steps we can actually do a new generation that's quite different from what we originally had planned and this means that we get significantly better output and tool call capability from the model and implementing this ability for the model to think and rethink when the problem changes is actually quite easy. Now I'll walk you through this using a practical example over here and this is a code base that I've built to test this tool but I'm not going to show you how to create an agent and handle tool calls and return things. You've probably built agents before so you know exactly how most of this stuff works. Now if you're watching this video you're surely into AI and my discord group will be an absolute gem for you. We're always discussing new AI development tips in there as well as agentic development pipelines to make the most of AI. I'll leave the link to that as one of the links in the description so be sure to join that for absolutely free and also make sure to leave a sub on this video as I'm always posting super helpful content on here. So this is essentially a Claude 3.7 Sonnet agent that has access to a bunch of tool calls and continues to generate its response until it thinks it's done. The specific use case here is a sort of customer assistant agent that is primarily dealing with users on an online shop and it's handling requests from them. So we've definitely given this agent a list of tools that it will need to handle its customers so it has the ability to get a customer get information about an order check what the return eligibility of an order so it can check if an item is valid for return or not and it can process a return and then most importantly here we've added the think tool so this is the function definition for a think tool as you can see the think tool is actually really really simple so all i'm doing is giving it a name and then a description here which just lets the model know that it can use this tool to think about something now this tool doesn't necessarily obtain any new information or change anything about the database that's included in the description over here but it just allows the model to have a little bit of dedicated thinking space where it can spend some additional time in there just sort of thinking about what it's doing. So you can see we have an input scheme over here all we do is just allow it to input a thought and then we tell it that the thought is essentially required. Now the actual definition of the tool is actually a lot simpler so over here which is the code where we actually process the tool calls that come in from the model here we have the handler for the think tool so all we do is we just read its thought and we display a visual for that thought. Other than that we actually don't return any 
anything to the model. And the reason we don't return anything is because the input for this function is actually part of the messages. So the messages will get fed back to the model anyway, and it will know what thoughts it thought while it was calling this function. So we don't actually have to return a duplicate of the thinking process and consume twice as much token space as we would have if we didn't do it. And that is pretty much it for the implementation. Now in practice, what these models typically use this tool for is the model will usually just outline its progress until that point, outline a way forward, justify the outlined way forward, and then also outline the next steps, right? So make a clear plan of what we're doing and where we're going. And as you can imagine, this is super, super important in some of these really, really complicated tasks. And just this simple level of reasoning can be an absolute game changer in some of the most complicated agentic tasks. Now I've run this test over here that you can also run by calling this anthropic think tool Python file in the example that I linked on GitHub earlier. And in essence, it follows a typical customer care pipeline. So the user comes in saying, hey, I bought some wireless headphones uh, the last month from your store. This is the order number. They worked fine, but they sound really bad. Can I return them? And what the model needs to do is initially just sort of make sure that their order actually exists. So it gets the order information over here. And now it knows that the order exists. And then it gets information about the customer. You can see in the information that the customer is a premium customer. And now once it has information, so it has a new problem that's coming because of the information from the tools. Now it resorts to using the think tool. So according to its thinking, well, this is the customer's details. These are the order details, right? And according to the return policy, it thinks that the customer has 52 days since their last purchase, which exceeds the 30 day return policy. So they don't really qualify for a return. However, the customer is actually a premium member, right? Which they might qualify for certain exceptions if this is the case, right? But there's a lot of missing information. So it still doesn't know if the product is damaged or new still and what the reason for the return was, although the user did actually specify what the reason for the return was. And then they don't know what the preferred refund method might be. So the model has run an outline of its current position and then it makes a plan for how to proceed. So it thinks the next step is we'll use the return eligibility uh, function to confirm if this is possible. And uh, first we need to ask about the condition of the product because the return eligibility requires that. And so its output to the user is, well, it says, thank you for status for giving it a while to check for what it's been doing. And it lets them know that it needs to check the eligibility. So it then asks if the product is new, used, or if it's actually damaged. And as you can see, that specific pipeline came from the process of actually giving itself time to think. Without this time to think, we're not entirely sure if the model would actually be able to come to this conclusion. Now, as you can probably tell, I've gained the high quality insights that I'm sharing with you in this video from working on some really special AI projects. At AIA, I've helped individuals and companies alike build some of the most special AI projects out there by providing the extensive experience and expertise needed in AI development to bring these projects to life. Now, if you've been looking for an AI professional to help you bring your project to life, go ahead and check out my portfolio in the description and book a meeting so that we can see how to take your AI project to the next level. There's never been a better time to build an AI tool to either use internally or sell to your consumers than now. So if there's something that you'd find super useful either for your project or a tool that you want to build, go ahead and check out that link in the description and see if, if the services that we can provide to you at AIA are something that you'd find super helpful. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue with the video. Now, Anthropic has run tests on this technique of thinking on the Tau benchmark, which I've checked out that benchmark in the past and they did mention that they did try to use the Think tool, which according to them didn't actually produce any result. And so I'll take this moment to give you a couple of guidelines on exactly how to use this Think tool. Now, according to Anthropic's report, they saw a 54% relative improvement from without the tool and then with the tool, which is a significant improvement compared to what the, the benchmark reports were actually saying about this tool just not being effective at all. And this ties into the absolute importance of using the right prompting with this tool. So when using this tool, what you want to make sure you do is really, really carefully prompt the model to make the absolute best use of this tool. Now here on their blog, Anthropic included an example of just the prompt for this specific thing tool. You can see how lengthy it is, but in essence, what they're doing is they're giving the model guidelines on when to use the tool, as well as an example over here on exactly how to think. Now, Claude 3.7 Sonnet is pretty smart, right? But you can see that they're including two full examples in here on how to use this tool so that the model has a very clear idea on when it's necessary to use it. And so prompting for this specific example, and if you take a look at their benchmarks over here, you can see that they had two think models. So they have the one that's sort of purple, that's the think with the prompt, and then the think model without a prompt. And you can see the think model actually reflects what was talked about in the Tau benchmark, where they said they didn't really see any significant improvements. But when you use think with a very detailed, effective system prompt, letting the model know exactly how to use the tool, you can see you get twice as much of an improvement uh, with that specific prompting technique. So prompting for this specific method is super, super important. You want to make sure you're building very, very detailed prompts for your specific use case so that your agents know exactly how to use this tool. And as we wrap up here, the final thing that I want to talk about is when to use the thing tool. So as you know, this is a tool that could increase the amount of processing overhead as well as just development time for your model. It's not always the best case to just always use it for everything. But there are some cases where this is a 
an absolute game changer. So in cases where agents need to navigate complicated guidelines, so the airline example is what Anthropy talked about. I just showed you an example where you need to know the exact details of a product before determining whether it can be returned. Those are actually useful cases to make use of this tool. We have cases where agents need to make sequential calls, so calling tools in specific orders, that's also super useful. And also in cases where functions, the tools that these agents are calling, return very, very complex data that needs to be carefully analyzed. If you carefully prompt your model, let it know exactly when to do additional thinking about a specific tool. It can carefully analyze the output of the tool to make the best decisions based on that tool. Now, in contrast, you don't want to use this thinking tool in cases where agents don't necessarily have to follow very complicated guidelines. They just have to do sort of one step and then get done with it. And also, if agents have to use very simple tools that are quite simple in both their input and output, then you don't want to use this tool because then the agent will, in most cases, it just won't call it. And then also, in some cases, it will call it, but very unnecessarily because it would have performed just as well without access to this tool. And that is pretty much it. Now, like I said, you have complete access to this GitHub repository with my complete implementation of this tool. I highly advise that you use this and maybe improve on it on your own. And let me know how you guys find this tool, what maybe caveats you find about it in the comment section. I'm always glad to hear from you guys in there. Thanks a bunch for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.